So I was talking to Jahan Dotson yesterday. That interview is available at grantanddanny.com. Second year a player last year really regressed and struggled. It's a monster third season for the former first rounder now. And he's very confident that he's going to break back out and, and look the part as the former 16th overall pick. But in talking to him, he said, you know, we're going to show you a very small sample of what we're capable of in this preseason opener against the Jets. And then he said, very, very small. Very, very, very small. And his joke was, it sounded like they're going to go out for a series or something. Right. But you just said this with Jaden Daniels. Like, is there any thought to... I remember with Robert Griffin in 2012 when I was on the beat then, and I've texted with him about this recently. He threw almost 30 passes. He played in three preseason games. Now, they ran a completely different offense in the preseason than they would run come week one with Kyle and read option and pistol in New Orleans and put up 40 points and no one saw it coming. Well, we have completely changed our eye line on like what is expected even for these young QBs with no experience. Is there any thought to giving them a bunch of run behind a starting line and just getting them more ready? Or is it just not worth the risk reward is out of whack? I think with a rookie quarterback, I think there is some merit to playing them a little bit more than, you know, like Matthew Stafford won't play. I mean, right. And There's why no reason he? he shouldn't. However, Getting a guy ready, even though you're playing whoever you play week one. If you're playing Philly week one, who do you play week one? Tampa on Tampa, the road. Tampa on the road. Whatever you see in these two weeks or three weeks of preseason, you're not going to see versus Tampa anyway. So this is a matter of getting in uh, continuity with your players. Uh, the play call, listen to the play call in the helmet, getting it, watching the play clock, cadence, all that stuff. Um, pre-snap, everything you need to do getting ready for a game. You don't want his first meaningful rep to be at Tampa. There's no way. You got to get him going uh, now. And practice is totally different. I mentioned that. There's no, you know, they, they can try to make simulate as close as they can to real life football, but unless the bullets are live, it's not real. Okay, but what about these joint practices? Same. You're not hitting a quarterback. True. Yeah. You're going to see different coverages and things of that, different blitzes and things of that nature, but you're as long as you're not live, it's not real to me. I, I played the position for a long time, not very good. But when you're not live, it's a total different mentality. So is this a quarterback specific point or for everyone? Like if I'm just say I'm a Brandon Coleman, the rookie left tackle, who I think it's a chance to start in week one, it looks like at a TCU. For him to go up against these Jets edge rushers, I am excited to see what the joint practice looks like. Right. Can he get as much or more out of a joint practice than a preseason game? Yeah, going against different people, different pass rush moves, different skill sets. You know, you get used to seeing Armstrong every day at practice or the same guys over and over. You know what kind of moves and what kind of pass rush things they like to do, the inside spin, the bowl, whatever it might be, the speed rush. Now you're going against a whole different set of skill set with the Jets. You've never seen this guy before. You try to study him as much as you can, but uh, – how are you going to handle a quick inside move or the spit, whatever it might be. So, yeah, I think uh, it's very beneficial for a lot of guys. It's and very beneficial like for that, coaches too. I just think that from a coaching standpoint to, to go where you're going there in a preseason game, we talk about this a lot. You may want to get work in red zone. You don't get a red zone opportunity. You may want to get work in short yardage or goal line, and it just doesn't come up. Whereas in a joint practice, if you're tight with, Mike Zimmer, let's say, from your oh, yeah. time you as scheduled a, You scheduled You're just a, like, hey, yeah. here are the periods I want. Oh, me too. Okay, we'll do yeah. this one, this one. You just knock all that out. I think it can be more beneficial or better than a preseason game. But your point is, and this is actually a really good observation, as a quarterback, the game is still going to far outweigh the practice just because of the physical nature. You're not wearing that penny. Yeah, exactly right. It's a big difference, <laughs> right? Even for receivers and backs, I mean, they're not getting hit either. You're not doing anything live. I mean, you want to see guys, how they handle contact. This is a contact sport. Until you practice contact, you're not going to know who the tough guys are, who the guys who can break tackles, run through tackles, tackle, physically tackle, right, and take the hits and, and, and do the best for your team. But, you know, but you do gain a lot from the joint practices. You know, you just got to avoid the fights, which we always had fights with a pain in the ass. But Yeah, so this is the thing that's going to, I think, still be the fly in the ointment. And here's where we're headed. Jay Gruden's on the show. Grant and Danny on the fan. He's in studio here uh, in the Navy Yard. Teams have almost all, it seems like, started to go toward this joint practice thing. Andy Reid's one of the few guys. I know your brother, John, was at Chiefs camp mm -hmm. this week. Andy Reid hates joint practices, refuses to do them. I don't know why. I'm assuming it's because of the fights. I don't know what else you wouldn't like about them. Maybe showing something to a team you may end up playing. That's probably avoidable, too. 
you guys did it with the Texans. I know there were some melees and the Patriots and Texans. Yeah. yeah, Patriots as well. Did you guys have fights with New England? I don't think we had one at New England. We had a couple at Houston. And, and the reason why I had one at Houston, we went one extra day. We shouldn't have gone. You know, we should have done two good practices. We tried to go a third practice, and everybody's kind of worn out. You did three? Yeah. yeah oh, that's a lot. Stupid. Yeah. Who's idea? Whose idea was that? Probably O'Brien. <laughs> we'll blame him, right? Yeah. I like that. Uh, we'll go Bill O'Brien. But now teams are starting to do one in some cases. Like, yeah. The Washington best way to do it is one, doing one day. One full one um, with as many situations as you can. A couple live scrim, not live, but a couple drives, you know, unscripted drives. And then the second one, maybe have a walkthrough, walk through critical situations, do your special team stuff. But that's my favorite way to do it. We try to do two and then a third uh, walkthrough type thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, and I don't know, I haven't asked Quinn this, but the reason that the Jets and the Commanders are just doing the one is probably to alleviate some of the tensions that grow over a couple of days, like a hockey series or something. Yeah, four. I can remember the first day we had a fullback that ran over one of their corners, and then uh, they got all chippy about it, and the coach yelled at them, hey, don't let them out tough you. So the next day, it was it was bloodbath. Yeah, they've been talking about it all night. Pierre was chirping and jj watts here i'm like hey don't, don't talk to him talk to somebody else not jj Jeez. anybody but jj watts yeah. i love pierre garcon yeah, he's that, a tough dude he played i always said he wore the fang mouth guard which yeah. is the same thing that ufc fighters wear with like the teeth basically so we would make a catch and you'd see the the fang teeth in the mouth guard and it was like he played football with that physicality like he was a cage fighter or something he did everything 100 miles an hour yeah you know, i had a ton of respect for pierre he never Never one time did I ever see him loaf in a game or practice. Practice either, huh? No, hell no. I love that. Yeah. That's the kind of guy you want. Um, But I think we're headed to this, and tell me if you, you disagree. So soon, whether it's next year or soon after, we're going to have 18 regular season games. We're going to have two preseason games. That's how they'll make up the 20 total. And then I'm guessing with two preseason games, teams would only really use one of them because there's always kind of been that red shirt game where you evaluate the back of the roster. Yeah. And, you get all your other starters and second string guys that just run some sprints beforehand, and then they wear visors on the sideline. So if we do the 18 regular season two preseason bit, and then there's you know, only those couple games, if you play guys just once, is that enough? I mean, no. w when are we at a point where we, we're not doing enough in August that the product's going to stink in September? The issue you have is we all know our top 10 to 12 guys on our roster. Those guys may not need it. The rest of the guys need it. They need the work. They need the development. We need to see the competition. You're not going to be sure who you're starting outside linebacker as you're starting a uh, nose tackle. You're maybe your uh, defensive end or safety. You might have a safety competition, a nickel competition. You might, you know, there's a lot of competitions going on there that you have to see these guys play and perform when the lights are on, not just in practice going to get the same guy over and over again. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good that comes out of preseason games. I know it's hard to watch for fans and people say, "Ah, oh, these guys don't care." People care. I mean, these guys these these guys fight for the 53 man roster. They care. There's a lot of guys in that locker room, and a lot of guys are going to get cut. And those guys get cut if they don't feel like they got a fair shake. It's 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 disappointing because they put a lot of work in to try to get this opportunity in the National Football League. And if you feel like you don't get one, you know, it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth, and you might miss on a guy. I mean, heck. We would have never found Fat Rob Kelly if we didn't have preseason, huh? And you, we know you love Rob Kelly. <laughs> I just loved him because he, he didn't do anything at Tulane. He just came here, and every rep he got, he made Crazy. something out of it. We we still play a clip every now and then where it sounds like you're looking at a piece of chocolate cake or something. <laughs> I, it, you're at the podium, and someone asks you, and you're like, oh, man, I love Rob. You were like Macho Man Randy Savage. You're like, oh, I, yeah. oh man, I love Rob Kelly. I just man. like the underdog, man. He, he, uh, he just he – just, took advantage of and if you don't get the reps you don't get the opportunity in preseason games you're not going to find guys like that another dime a dozen you can argue but you need to find those guys especially to fill out your roster for special teams i mean a new kickoff rule uh your third fourth fifth corner they got to be able to be physical and if you don't see them tackle they might be they might be afraid to tackle you don't know you won't know until you play in Tampa Bay on a kickoff and the guy runs for a 90 yard touchdown. You're like, son of a gun. I knew we should have kept the other guy. This guy can't tackle. You love the new kickoff rule. I, I just, I don't like it. Visually, it just doesn't look right. I saw you tweeting about it. You were making your jokes. I, I think it's going to be awesome. Here's why. Yeah. Kicks are going to get returned. Now, we could argue that being at this point now where we have to change everything and we should just go back to the original, the OG kickoff, and, and that's fine, but we're chasing a ghost. It's not going to happen. They've made the game safer, they've, they've ridded the game 
of those violent collisions. My point is just last year we had 2.2 kick returns per game. In the first game of the preseason, we had seven out of eight returns. The XFL, using this rule two years ago, they had over eight kickoffs. They dumped the rule after one per, game. They did. I agree. They because, dumped it. But that's because they you merged. You know why they dumped it? Why? Because it's stupid. I disagree. Okay. They merged with the UFL. I, I, and I want to hear why you think it's stupid in a second. But they, they it's not the same league. I think if the XFL was still non-UFL, it would have still been the XFL kickoff. But they merged, and it's now run by the guys that ran the UFL, who did their own thing rules-wise. It was, I think a lot of XFL fans missed it. Yeah, but what yeah. is the point? I mean, the point I, is to I get just, returns, right? I think, yeah. What don't you like? Just how dumb it well, looks? First of all, one of the most memorable plays in Super Bowl history was a surprise onside kick to start the third quarter. You lose that. And I know a lot of teams don't do it. We did an onside kick that really helped save my job against Tampa Bay when we were. Code red game? Code red game. Right, we got an outside surprise onside kick. We that might be it. the last onside kick that anybody got around. Well, here. I'm just saying that possibility is gone now. True. I mean, now I do not hate ma- that. Not I, many teams do that, but that is a major part of. You got to be ready for it. You know. And then, I hate that there's no onside kick. I yeah. I can't come back. That's to that. why I don't like it. Now okay, I know there's fair. not many onside kicks, and onside kicks are dangerous and all that stuff. But still, the element of the surprise onside kick is is a pivotal part of a game if, if used properly. And even if it works one time out of the year, that one time could change the course of a career like mine. I mean, that helped us win that game, which then we went on a six or seven game win streak. We won the division. We lose that game. I probably get fired after that game. And uh, so, yeah, so that's, that's why I don't like it. I just don't like guys standing there waiting for the ball to get catched and then, oh, okay, we're going to run. And I just, it just looks funny to me. That's all. I, I might grow on me. Once I see Cordell Parrot Patterson do it and some of these other guys do it, it might be more fun. It looks terrible. I readily yeah. admit that. First time I saw it, I thought, this is outrageous. But then as you see a lot of kick returns and there's football being played instead of just a stupid ceremonial sprint well, down the field. if they're afraid of injuries and stuff, then why would they put this rule in? There's going to be more collisions. Well, but you're, you're 10 yards apart, so the collisions still aren't violent. you tackle the guy. I mean, yeah, then you got a chance tackles. for it. There might be a hip drop tackle, 15 yards. Oh, don't get you started go, on the hip you drop might tackle. get hit high. That's a 15-yard penalty, too. I know how you, you might hit him too that. low. So now you're just giving the referees another chance to call a holding penalty, another chance for a hip drop tackle. Just now you're having another full play for these referees to ref 